Hey guys, what's up? I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught software developer, and today's video is all about how to maximize your productivity as a software developer, or if you are learning to become a software developer, how to maximize your study time and learning time. Now before I dive into what those productivity hacks are, I just wanna say, uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, that I'm going to be making an announcement over the next couple weeks. I'm not quite sure when that will be, but I'm hard at work at the thing I'll be announcing, so keep your eyes peeled. Now, so let's talk about productivity, right? <laughs> How to be as productive as you possibly can when you're uh, knee deep in software development or even when you are learning, whether you're doing the self-study route or the classically educated route. Before I get to my first sort of piece of advice, Let's talk about how I started as a software developer and how I learned not to, uh, how I learned this mistake firsthand. So when I first became a software developer, I I got my first job and I put a lot of pressure on myself in that situation to to as, learn as much as I could in a short period of time because not only did I want to stay hired because I was on like a three month like contract where they could let me go at the end of the contract uh, for any reason, so it was kind of like a test run to make sure that I was you know I was decent as a developer. Anyhow, so there was a lot of pressure on me, and in those early days, I just you know showed up for work for my eight hours, stayed late if I needed to, worked on the weekends, worked after work. I just put a lot of time in. I know the one true thing about success in general is that if you spend the time doing anything, you will get better at it, right? So my, my one paradigm was that if I just put my butt in the chair and sat there and stared at the code, that things would, I'll get better. I just put my trust in that. I put my trust in that process. And it worked to a large degree because like, let's say that you face a problem and you don't know your way around it. One of the best things you can do is just work endlessly until you figure out the problem, right? Like that's sort of a intuitive thing that makes sense. The problem is in those early days, I didn't take many breaks. I was obsessed with hustling, right? Like I felt like any time that I spent away from the computer was me being lazy or me being not a hard worker. And everyone I think has is pretty familiar with the hustle culture. If you watch any Gary Vaynerchuk videos, which by the way, I'm a huge fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. If you watch any of his videos, I don't think so much lately, but previously in the previous few years, like he always talks about working hard and you don't need to, you only need to sleep like five hours a night. And that was my mentality. Like I lived it and it worked to a large degree. Like I say work, meaning I was doing it. I was living that life and I improved my skills to a certain degree, but, 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 but that is unsustainable, 100% unsustainable. And at some point you start to, you know, you start to burn out or you just start to realize that like, hey, I can't be working this hard for that long unless you just really, really enjoy coding to the point where like you're doing it 18 hours a day or whatever ridiculous thing. And what I started to do was I started to realize that I just wasn't being that efficient with my time. At the end of my work days, I was really tired. I was exhausted. My mind was just spent. I would come home and just be like, sort of like vegged out because when, you, when you're working on all these problems, when you're challenging your skills, it's tiring for your mind and you, you, especially when you're not taking breaks, there's no recharge time. And so I don't know at what point I came across it. I wanna say maybe after a year or so, I came across the Pomodoro technique, right? Which to be honest with you, I still don't even know the exact specifications of the Pomodoro technique. So if you really wanna learn what that is, I say just Google it, you can figure it out. But essentially I call it you know, time blocking which just means that before you get started on any piece of work, you have, you, 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 you have a finite amount of time in which you're gonna finish it. So you set a timer for 20 minutes, and at the end of 20 minutes, you take a five minute break and you just work in those, those blocks. So you can just keep doing 20 minutes on, five minutes off, 20 minutes on, five minutes off. I, right now, will go anywhere from 20 minutes to about 50 minutes, and that's really my range. Depending on where my mind is at, where my ADD is at in that moment, I will, will work a time block for, let's say, 20 minutes and then take a five minute break. If it's 50 minutes, you just take a 10 minute break. But essentially, I never or I rarely will sit down without a finite end time to my, to my work block because a lot of really bad stuff happens when I don't set that time limit. The best way to describe why the time limit is so great for yourself and why just working until you are burnt, you know, until you're mentally frazzled is a bad thing. The reason that's a bad thing is because the way I look at it is this, okay? You have two brains when you're coding. At least I have two brains when I'm coding. The first brain is like a hard hat brain, right? It's like you put on the hard hat and you just plug away. You, you take the jam, jack hammer or whatever and the hammer and you just hammer away. And I would compare that to being like when you're working on a, on, a, on a work item or something and you're just going away, you're plugging away, you have 
you know what you need to do and you just keep going. The other brain is the more contemplative brain, the one that sort of takes a step back and looks at everything you need to do Put, you know, is able to prioritize your work, is able to look at, it's able to look at the big picture and basically make everything fit together. And those things are diametrically opposed. So I think when you set the timer, when you do the Pomodoro technique, when you know what you're gonna work on before you start working in the time block, it gives you those finite period of time where you can just wear the hard hat and just plug away and plug away and plug away. If you wanna jump all over the place, if you wanna work on this, on that, those 20 minutes or 50 minutes, you can do whatever you want and just go guilt-free. But when the timer's up, that's when you stop. You pull back, you go take a break, you pet the dog, you get a drink of water, and that's when your sort of more contemplative brain gets into, into gear and you're able to sort of piece things together, you're able to take a step back, and a lot of times, problems that you are having during the working phase, during the hard hat phase or the hard hat brain, they will sort of just come to you. And it's, it's amazing, like you need breaks to actively let your brain sort of process things. If you've got to think of your brain as a computer, it needs time away so that you can actually recharge and, and get that processing power back. So I highly recommend time blocking, Pomodoro technique, whatever you want to call it. If you really want to look more into the Pomodoro technique, I think people have written about it ad nauseum on the internet. I'm just going to add what, that's my experience with it. Definitely take a look if you're interested. Another huge productivity tip that I cannot recommend enough is planning out your day. Again, going back to the beginning, my the way I operated for a very long time when I was a software developer, or when I started out as a software developer, I should say, was that I sort of showed up to work, you know, I'd open up my computer, I have a bunch of applications that open, and I would just sort of, <laughs> there was no really, there was no methodical approach to like, how do I start my day? I rarely ever sat and sort of contemplated like, what did I need to do for that day? It was more, what's in front of me? What do I need to be doing? Oh, I got an email about some work item I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I was working on yesterday. I just looked at my Slack messages. Again, not methodical. The pro that can work. Like certainly you can just open up your computer every day, just see what needs to be done and go that way. But if you really wanna maximize your time and effort and you wanna be efficient with your time and you really wanna be a, a effective software developer, it's best to spend 10, 15 minutes every single morning figuring out, well, it's, it, it's a few things. It's thinking of your, you know, your bigger priorities, your smaller priorities, what work items need to be done, what should you be working on, even for yourself as sort of personal career development, what, what technologies have you wanted to learn that, that you need to work on today? Do you need to do study 20 minutes on a JavaScript framework that you don't know. Whatever your long and short term goals, you need to factor that into your daily work. Not only that, if you want to be a good worker, you want to be organized about how you work. So you want to figure out like what is in the short term, the long term. There are so many things that you might need to do at any company from documentation to just obviously work on work items. Either way, spending time planning at the beginning of your day is going to make you more effective in accomplishing your goals, in being a good employee for your company. Don't just be the person who just shows up and just looks at your computer and like looks at your inbox. It's like, what's going on today? Uh, and then you just get right to it. Spend 10 minutes, breathe, drink your coffee, like whatever it takes and just think for a little bit and things will come to you, I, I guarantee it. But don't make the mistake of just responding to fires, as I say. Now, the last mistake that I made a lot in the beginning and still make to this day, because it's, it's a temptation that I think all of us understand is the, the, the idea of distractions. There's so many distractions on a computer, it's amazing. Like, it's amazing to think that we actually are able to get any work done, but for me, for example, on my computer, and just, just let's go through all the distractions I have in front of me. I've got my cell phone, which is you know, I mean, text messages, email updates. I have Slack open because I use it for work. I have an email. I have two emails. I have my personal email, my work email up typically. Uh, you know, I'm big, I like watching YouTube videos <laughs> when I'm taking breaks, and YouTube is amazing, but it can suck you down the rabbit hole. There's a lot that I can't think of right now, but those are just to name a few. And the challenge is that if you really wanna do work efficiently and effectively, I think everybody would agree that you need to narrow down your focus to one thing. You need tunnel vision. To really be most effective, you need tunnel vision on what you're doing, block out everything else. You need to get really engaged in what you're doing, really chew on the, on the little idiosyncrasies of what you're doing. And the more that you can block out distractions, notifications, the, that is really going to help what you're doing. Now, there's nothing, you know, people say like, oh, well, if I just get an email, it's not that big of a deal. Yes and no, here's the thing. When you are high, doing something highly that needs a lot of your attention and focus and concentration, it may seem like, oh, if I get a simple email notification, that's not a big deal. 
Well, it's not really true. You have to think of it like your your ability to think very deeply on problems is like building a glass house. It's something, this is a metaphor someone else actually gave to me. It's like building a glass house and it's really hard to build that momentum where you're really deep in the code thinking about a problem but it's really easy to shatter that momentum with a notification or two notifications or listening to a podcast in the background. These things are highly disruptive to maximum efficiency thinking. So the more that you can pare down all those distractions, if you can stop watching YouTube videos, if you can keep your mind on one track and one track as much as you can, it's gonna be great. One of the best things I ever did is while I'm working, I put my phone on do not disturb. So all the text messages and email messages and you know, I, I get every notification you could think of on my phone, I don't even see them pop up. I just can un unlock my phone because I have an iPhone. I can just unlock my phone and just look and see what's going on instead of constantly being barraged. And I try to regularly check all my sort of areas like email, social media, on an hourly or, or two hour basis. So that way my, you know, I'm, I'm always keeping track of things, but it's not just sort of, I'm getting all these little notifications all over the place, which will break my concentration. So the more that you can pare down your distractions, the better. Obviously within reason, we all have, like I have to have Slack open because my coworkers may need something, but the better that you can do with this, or at least for finite periods of time, I think the more you will benefit and the more you'll be like one of those highly productive, highly efficient, people and just software developers, I guess. All right, so that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just trying to give out some of the things that I've learned from being a software developer for a few years. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Go ahead and subscribe if you like the video. Click the bell icon if you wanna get notifications for when I put new videos out. Obviously leave a like, cause that's what you're supposed to do. It's YouTube, right? Smash the like button. Other than that, that's all I got. Thank you guys so much and peace.